All right, <clears throat> so nuclear chemistry. So a little review on what you guys took home from 113 back in the day, Gen Chem 1. You just got to know what the isotope symbols mean. So what is this lower number called? Atomic, Atomic number, what does it give you? Good. It gives you the number of protons. And provided it's a neutral species like this one here, it would also give you the number of electrons. But we're not going to concern ourselves so much with the electrons in this case. So, because we're really going to be focusing on the nucleus, hence nuclear chemistry. So, what do you call the atomic, or what do you call the top number here? Atomic weight. Yeah. It's not the atomic weight, actually. There's another name for it. The atomic weight's the average that's on the periodic table. But this is not the average. This is for this specific isotope. We just call it the mass number. So, you got the atomic number, the mass number. What does the mass number ultimately tell you? Yeah, protons and neutrons combined. Protons and neutrons combined. So, in this case, how many protons and how many neutrons are in uranium-235? Cool, so 92 protons. So, and then, yeah, protons plus neutrons minus protons will give you 143 neutrons. So notice, which one of these numbers is fixed for uranium? Protons. The atomic number, the number of protons, is a set number for a given element. So you change that, you've actually changed the element. But the neutrons, you can change the number of neutrons, and it's still the same element, but it'll be a different isotope. So cool. This happens to be the, you know, the particular isotope of uranium that we use in like nuclear reactors and stuff like that, nuclear bombs. So cool. So just a little refresher because we're going to hit this time and time again. Mass number, atomic number. All right. So. So stability and radioactivity are intimately related. So when we talk about nuclear reactions, so an unstable nucleus is more likely to undergo a nuclear reaction, so nuclear decay. So if you notice, this is the one chapter where we're now dealing with the nucleus. This chapter stands alone from all the rest of chemistry. All the rest of chemistry, both this year of chemistry and next year of chemistry, deals with electrons, because electrons are what hold molecules so together. So bonds are made of electrons. So when we make and break bonds, normal chemical reactions, it's all about the electrons. This is the one area, though, that is going to deal with the nucleus. So when you hit this big time in more of a physics perspective as well, but we'll hit it in this one chapter, and it's all dealing with the nucleus. We're going to ignore the electrons for just a bit. So stability and radioactivity, again, are intimately related. And the way it works is they're inversely related. The more stable a nucleus, the less radioactive it's probably going to be. The less stable a nucleus, the more radioactive it's going to be. So it's unstable nuclei that tend to be radioactive. So if you look, so I give you some criteria for how you figure out if a nucleus is either stable or unstable, and therefore either not so likely to be radioactive or likely to be radioactive. So what's the first thing you want to look for? So you want to look for the atomic number bigger than 83. So for atomic numbers 84 and higher, so notice Z here stands for the charge, and the nucleus is charged because that's protons, so that's the number of protons. And so for atomic number 83 and larger, I'm sorry, 84 and larger, bigger than 83, all those elements are radioactive. If you look at the first one on your list on the periodic table, it's polonium. So, and it's the first time you ever see the atomic mass in parentheses. Why do they put it in parentheses? It's just a whole number. Well, it's so radioactive that they can't get a real accurate measurement. Because you put it on the scale, and it's just radioactively decaying. And so to get an accurate weight, it's tough. So they just kind of put parentheses approximately. And you'll see, 84 is the first one where that happens. And a lot of them bigger than 84 are in the same boat. But regardless of whether they're in parentheses or not, atomic number 84 and higher, they're all radioactive, every single last one of them. Heavy elements tend to be radioactive. Bigger and bigger nuclei, it's just hard to keep those things together. So. So the first rule really makes it easy to peg out something that is for sure radioactive. Now the next three rules though, rather than talking about what's going to be radioactive, what's not going to be, we can only talk about trends. So, and I'm going to give you some trends for stability. And if I'm giving you trends for stability, 
then what would you be looking for for radioactivity? The exact opposite. So if you look first thing, even numbers of protons and neutrons is more likely to be stable, less likely to be radioactive. So it's when the number of protons and or neutrons happens to be an odd number, turns out instability. And in fact, if both the number of protons and, I can't spell even, how about even? So, but if the number of protons and neutrons are both odd numbers, there's only a handful, four or five, stable nuclei that have odd numbers of both. So if you get an odd number of both protons and neutrons, odds are you probably are gonna be radioactive. Very few exceptions. Last thing we'll talk about was what we call an N over Z ratio. Here N stands for the number of neutrons, Z stands for the number of protons. So if you look at a nucleus, a nucleus is kind of a funky thing. So you might real, you know, wonder, why does a nucleus stay together anyways? Because you got a whole bunch of protons in the nucleus and how do protons feel about each other? They don't like each other. So why are they hanging out together in this nucleus in a really tiny confined space? What actually holds the nucleus together? Well, the neutrons help kind of stabilize the picture as we'll see, but what do we call the force that holds a nucleus together? They call it the strong force. <laughs> Oddly enough, because it's really strong to hold those protons so close together. And we call the energy associated with it the nuclear binding energy, the energy that holds that nucleus together. So it turns out, yeah, the neutrons play a role in this. And it turns out it's best if that N over Z ratio is really close to one. For every proton, you want to have at least, an, you know, you want to have exactly a neutron to kind of balance that out. So, and technically, this is only good up to atomic number 20, up to atomic number 20. Once you get over atomic number 20, so that ratio starts to grow a little bit. So and as you get higher and higher than atomic number 20, like if you go to atomic number 21, that ratio probably wants to be about 1.1. If you go to atomic number 30, probably like 1.2. But if you get to atomic number like 90, that's when it's gonna start approaching a maximum of 1.6. So if you look here, if I'm gonna ask you a question involving the N over Z ratio, because if you're bigger than atomic number 20, that's bigger than calcium, well then, you don't have an exact N over Z ratio you wanna hit. It just gradually gets larger and larger. It's hard for me to ask you a question about that. But for all the elements up through calcium, exactly one to one ratio of neutrons and protons. And so if I wanna ask you a question involving the N over Z ratio, I'm definitely gonna make it atomic number 20 or, low, or lower because you want an exactly a one to one ratio. So we'll talk about this a little more in a little bit here as well. But again, these are the stable numbers. And we'll talk a little more about the belt of stability. So the farther you get away from, say, a one-to-one -one ratio, if your atomic number is 20 or lower, the more likely you are to be radioactive, the less stable. So these are what we want for stability. Last thing we'll talk about are magic numbers. You do not have to know the magic numbers. There are certain numbers that are magic if you have those particular numbers. So of protons or neutrons or both, great. It tends to lead to greater stability. They're magic. So there are magic numbers of electrons, although we never called them magic numbers. So the magic numbers of electrons would be like two. That would correspond to helium, magic number of electrons. So or 10, that would correspond to neon or 18, that would correspond to argon. Notice who has the magic numbers of electrons and are really stable? Noble gases. We never called them magic numbers, so, but this principle of having certain numbers of electrons leading to stability, so we never talk about it typically, but we will in nuclear chemistry. There are these magic numbers, and if you have those numbers of protons and or neutrons, you're more likely to be stable. So because we don't make you memorize these, I either gotta put them in a question, or more likely, I just probably won't ask you a question about it. So I put it up there to be thorough, but probably not gonna see anything about magic numbers on any exam you'll see. Cool, so again, the first rule allows you to identify something right off the bat as radioactive. The last three rules allow you to look at things and 
see if they're going to more likely to be stable or more likely to be radioactive.